Hi, my name is Maria Panfilova. I'm a 3D character artist for games and movies. In this video, we continue to texture this creature in Substance Painter. On the previous lesson, I showed you all layers of the face and we now continue with the body. So with the body, I took all layers from the face, duplicated them. I didn't use instance a lot because I didn't worry about seams, so I could just duplicate uh, layers and tweak them and that's fine for me. Uh, so there's no need to go through all layers and explain because uh, they're the same as the face layers. Uh, the only interesting thing I can show you is how I did nails. On the render now they look like that. And uh, we can divide the nail by many elements that combines together and give the effect. This is how the fingers look without nail layer. And uh, the folder with nail uh, have that many layers. And uh, starting from base, it's just another color layer with a roughness adjustment. So uh, the nail properties uh, usually more glossy than everything else but not too glossy because we don't uh, want to make them shiny and i guess on the render they're a little bit too shiny i wanted to decrease that on the edits i put the transparency into 50 percent uh, because i want to see the skin color underneath uh, the next layer i would call nail color variation. I painted uh, this layer with color, uh, just uh, indicating some variation with warm color. Maybe put it to overlay. I'm adjusting it a little and select brighter color. If we take a look at the reference, we can see lighter areas and more reddish areas. So I wanted to see some variety on colors. Uh, within the nails and uh, another good example of that the next layer called nail bottom this is a half moon shape at the bottom you can also see it on the reference uh, pretty recognizable shape uh, that sometimes it's not that obvious but still lighter color at the root so just also painted a mask to fill there and created it really quick. The next layer is nail tip. Uh, same thing, paint a mask on fill layer and we see that the color of the tip is different. Again, checking with the reference and see that it is also really common thing that tip of the color will have different color. The part that contacting with the finger will be warmer and this will be colder. The next layer is bumps. And here I used material from substance source. And you see that those bumps behaves as vertical lines, which is also very typical for nail. We can detect those lines on the reference. Of course, they are very subtle and maybe I exaggerating it too much, but for the effect, for some style, I really like to do that. In Substance Source, you can find this fingernail material and it has uh, both diffuse and bump map. Uh, I only use bump and paint uh, color by, by myself. So just download the file, copy it to this path, admin documents, algorithmic substance, copy it here. And uh, I put this folder into my bookmarks on the left, so I have it all the time and with very quick access. Now I can find it in material by searching by name. So 
So here is how the material looks. Uh, but the problem with it is that the direction of the line depends on the direction of UVs. So if we look how the nails place on UVs, is they are all placed into the same direction, it's a perfect situation, but if not, you will need to adjust uh, the nail direction into each nail. So that's exactly what I did. I have a few bumps. Uh, one bounce, bump is looking to the top by tape planar projection. And the same layer, but with another placement, I put into some nails that looks horizontally like this one. This way I matched the nails. The next layer is dirt, also painted layer in between this uh, white part of the nail and the nail itself. Uh, in between there will be a dirt. Here are some reference examples of that. Then we have curvature. I showed uh, it many times at fill layer, layer with curvature. and. It fills the crevices with darker color and for fingers I think it's very relevant to do and I even can do it quite strong. Pretty often we have this darkening effect. This layer is called cuticle. Uh, not sure that I made it right. I wanted to make this lower part less glossy than the rest of the nail, maybe the color is I need to tweak. And basically, I wanted to create this uh, lower dry part, uh, but maybe change the height, maybe it will help a little. And change. Transparency. And I think cold color will work better. These whitening parts are pretty common. So as I mentioned before, there are some whitish and reddish and they are mixed together. Uh, this photo uh, obviously again is, uh, have a lot of color corrections that makes all details stronger and it's good for us so we can check. So yeah, I think these whitish things are good for the result. Let's fix the name to whitish. And wanted to... Wanted to fix the mask and paint it more locally. Something like that. The last layer is wizard. Uh, similar to what I did to the skin, as I showed before, this uh, white covers of that skin above everything else. On the nails, similar effect. You can see those white lines pretty clear on this example. So it's basically what I wanted to add. I wanted to make stronger this red area around nails and why it's below the folder because it's gold outside nails and the skin uh, comes redder around nails. Maybe it's too strong above so maybe erase some redness. So on the reference here this redness I meant and wanted to do. On the legs I copy pasted these layers and of course I needed to paint its own mask on some areas where I supposed to paint mask. But most of the job already done on hand nails. Also uh, I have some layer here that fills the inside of the palm by lighter color. 
it uh, looks more natural when you have more tan on the outer side of the palm and on the inner it's more pale and uh, same thing here inside the elbow is usually pale color i wanted to treat arms like close to human arms so we have more tanned area and more pale areas so there is a variety across and the elbow i put a, a lot of dirt on it and i think it makes sense like uh, his arms and legs are dirtier than the face probably he his road to the throne hall was quite harsh and he is not tidy at all it have some veins layer same way as the face the leg have a variation of color you see more tent area uh, on the top and more pale area at the bottom and obviously it's because he's wearing uh, some kind of a shoe slippers or sandals and uh, usually uh, here will be a very pale area and fingers goes to red so his skin is another color not human color but i tried to fit into that idea and i made this area paler than everything else everything else is more tanned and the tips of the fingers i made much darker the knees same as the elbow i treated more like darker area some example of that that is more red and darker place here it's quite obvious it's a good thing to google some dirty legs example and just see how the dirt can look like on the leg there is different type of dirt there is dry or wet dirt and how it's how much of it and there's usually some gradient uh, the lower area the more dirt we see in this case i recommend you to use some texture on the layer because just a fill color is works well when we have a small amount of it but if you have big amount it it will be it will look unnatural that all dirt have the same color so i recommend you to find some texture and in source and use it as a base and mix it with the mask uh, some textures have a pretty cool variety of color uh, which is really great the pouch and the dress have a similar suede material at base i took it also from source library some of them not remember which exactly but it have nice bump on it i looked at this reference for the pouch and you have a lot happening here uh, you have a large amount of variations between dark brown and very light colors and um, roughness variation we also have so i wanted to fit uh, this reference to do that i mixed a lot of layers into the main one this one is a inner side of the material any kind of leather have inner and outer sides and one of the side is usually lighter I painted one of the sides lighter color then I have a bunch of layers that create some variety this one is um, darkening within occlusion maybe make it stronger a little this one is brighter and makes more saturated areas on some random places it's distributed by grunge mask uh, the next one is similar so brighter lighter area that goes into some random places like that to things like that i can also add some bump but be careful not to make it too strong another layer with variation of color the base is a grunge but i also painted 
it here and there. Some other kind of dirt and I like to add uh, some contrast with a light kind of a dirt and it have some small dots. Some recent work by Ali Rahman I saw and it's a good example to explain this. Uh, little white dirts everywhere and I, I think it's really really looking natural when you have this con contrast tiny bits. Fabric edge very typical for suede to have this corners lighter areas. Maybe make it a bit stronger too. And of course it's uh, it should be a cavity based a generator that use some cavity. Uh, most of generators that I use I don't uh, make them from scratch but I go to smart mask library and choose something from here and if I want I tweak it. Another light edges mask but different color uh, gives more variety. Some other color variation uh, which have purple tint on it. Just not to make it too orange but uh, introduce another color tone to it. And dirt layer is not very visible. It's more visible in the inner layer. When you add so many layers sometimes uh, maybe you want to tweak the all colors above so you can create new layer and uh, put it in a path full mode and select uh, levels for example and you can tweak all layers together at the top if you don't want to go to each one and tweak it you can do it uh, quickly by that the dress material is pretty similar, a lot of dirts and variations and uh, maybe it's too much of them but on the final render I see it like this and um, a lot of it in the shadow so I probably spent a bit less time on the dress in general. Uh, also one really cool layer that I have is a crumple layer and it have only height stack and in the fill it have crumbled paper texture. If we go to mask uh, selecting this fill we can see how the texture looks like. It adds feel of memory folds on top of everything and the effect is really nice. Uh, maybe it's not that visible on the texture scene but on the render you will see a big difference when you add that and just to remind this texture I took from Surface Mimic website. There is some variations of crumpled paper here and one of them I use a lot for closing and put it on layer to edit. This piece of fabric is really really dirty and I added all sorts of stuff here similar to pouch and dress. As for the reference, I used uh, things like that and I want to drag your attention that it have diffused variations of color that are very smoothly going from one color to another and also it have some sharp bits. So I think uh, it's very important to do both uh, and mix uh, diffused variations with uh, uh, sharp Pieces. It's what uh, makes the material really interesting and of course diffused and sharp both of them should not be always random but more often they are placed on top of some sculptural areas so if you use a cavity and occlusion mask to them and generators it will be more natural looking effect but with that also using some random distribution is also very good. The base of this material is a wool woven fabric. You can find it on the source. It's good that you can switch color of both direction of threads. You can make it uh, two colored. So 
you pick color 1 and color 2 and uh, the roughness also can be contrast and the bump looking good and on top of that uh, same way I added all bunch of variations that makes it more interesting this one is on by curvature mask uh, gradient mask and uh, this one have uh, darker roughness and my idea was that the area of clothes above the head will be a bit wet and dirtier maybe it's uh, blood or something else not obvious blood but some kind of dirt another bits of dirt with bump on it another contrast color so there's a mix in between blue and purple and I wanted to play on the contrast in between these two colors uh, so usually I pick some colors and play in between variety of that uh, you can take a look at this close uh, from also Dark Crystal TV series and there is a variety of blue and purple here uh, the overall feel of the cloth is blue but uh, you can also see uh, purple tones here it's not uniform there is a lot of happening here and there is also contrast lighter bits uh, as well and there is also pattern which makes it uh, even more interesting and the pattern bits are have yellow in it uh, yellow color orange yellow is uh, opposite uh, to blue and they works really well to together only thing that is important is to make one color is dominant uh, onto another color in my case uh, purple is more dominant and blue is only in some places so th these are uh, contrast bits of light color maybe increase the contrast more make it more visible this is called leaks and on leaks i usually create uh, overlay or multiply layer with darker roughness and it's another roughness and color variation crumple layer as i showed on dress same thing have a texture that makes everything more crumple you can always check that on a normal plus height plus mesh mask how it looks this was barely visible I think I should bring it up more and maybe paint it somewhere else because the effect is pretty nice Another dirt. Another bump layer that not very visible, but it's uh, more like a noise to the main bump. So the initial bump of this clothes looks too perfect to me. I wanted more chaos to it, so it makes the clothes looking more warm. And another white dirt layer looks like that it's the same principle I used to this stones uh, I use some substance source material on the base and a lot of kinds of the dirt that changes the color variety you have more bluish and you have more warm areas and different types of dirt mixed together and also I didn't figure this light dirt without it it would look uh, too single tone and by this contrast dots I bring more vibrance to it this wooden plank is all the same as before some material on the base wood material which is look really great in my opinion I like the texture of it uh, it's pretty sharp and contrast uh, as I like and it also have uh, vertical lines that I also like 
So I have lines sculpted on Z brush and also I have lines here and they can be in some conflict. They cannot perfectly follow each other exactly, but I checked it in, on the render and for me it looked well. The only thing I wanted to fix uh, that because I projected as UV projection on the seams I will have problem here and it looks weird how they come together at the corner. So on the top level I erased a little bit of height layer with mask. And on top of that, the same way, all kinds of dirt. This is the curvature that makes the sculptural lines stronger. The texture and sculpt mix better together. Color variation below the head, that maybe some blood spilling uh, from the head. And uh, the first layer is a diffusion transition, and second is much more sharp and strong. So two layers work together and also lighter contrast dirts that make everything more vibrant. I only didn't say anything about head, but uh, the head will be in the shadow and we don't see it much. I brought up some random shader to it with some dirt and height variations. It's probably some textures copy pasted from skin layer. Didn't spend much time on it really, but it have something and it's good enough for me. When you're done, you can always do the final render in iRay, which is inside of Substance. It takes some time to warm up, but once you already open it, uh, it opens pretty fast. With my new NVIDIA RTX graphic card, it works really, really fast. I almost don't need to wait to see the result. Uh, there is some restrictions in iRay that I don't like. First of all, it will only open the size of the texture that you have in your viewport. And the maximum size that you can have is 4K and I like to export it in 8K. Another restriction is how subsurface scattering look. I don't really like how the skin with uh, subsurface look. Maybe it, it just uh, needs a different way to set it up. Also in general I like that in Maya I have more control to set up lighting and everything else. So I prefer to render it in Maya and Redshift. Uh, this render is uh, a very good way for me to check the values if they are right or wrong because the result is definitely will be closer to Redshift than viewport view and sometimes I just open it and see what colors are wrong and fix it before I export it. In my portfolio I have some work that I did in iRay in Substance is uh, these guns from down of War 3. So it's a small props with low amount of textures and the look of it was just perfect to me uh, in iRay so I didn't need to export it to Maya and se set up render there. But the work like that I'll definitely want to export into Maya and Redshift. Uh, let's see how the performance works uh, when I have render open. So Graphic cards work for around 10% and uh, the memory is uh, half full. So I guess there is not too heavy scene and it uh, d doesn't use all abilities of graphic cards right now. So on the next lesson we will be exporting all textures into Redshift and check how it looks there.